Yeah. So first thing is that I think there's a biological proclivity towards focusing on the negative. The, the oft given example is that we see uh, if there's wind rustling in the bushes, we go, okay, that's probably a line, right? If somebody doesn't like us, we go, it's probably the worst case scenario so that we can address the threats to our livelihood. Uh, that's built into us. Then on top of that, there's a layer of personal history, which is you might have parental things that, that uh, this reflects a scenario early in your life where you knew that you were a bad boy, right? Or a bad girl. And, and you are prone to recognize that because it was a message that was given to you when you were little and you're looking in a, in a conf- confirmation bias style to find that sort of thing. So you're not going to unhuman yourself, but what mm-hmm. you might do is unravel that second piece. Uh, and you can do this in a number of ways. You can do therapy. We have our course, Emotional Mastery. We rarely talk about it because we don't get a lot of questions like this. But uh, if you're interested, we'll put a link to Emotional Mastery or, or the email list, wherever we, wherever we sell it. Uh, but that's about unraveling childhood beliefs and experiences. In terms of what you can do today, Ben's point, don't beat yourself up on top of the beating yourself up that you're doing for this. It's completely, totally normal. One exercise from Emotional Mastery, which you can do, that I would recommend just trying is the if-then exercise. So it looks briefly, because I know you got (laughs) to go like this. You write down uh, the chain of if-then events that are causing you to feel this particular way. So you go, okay, if this person says that they don't like me, then they won't hang out with me. You know, if they don't hang out with me, then everyone else will see them not hanging out with me and think I'm a loser. If everyone thinks that I'm a loser, then... I will be alone. If I am alone, then I will be unhappy. Whatever it is, it'll look something like that. And you wind up at, a, at the bottom, you wind up with an emotion. And then you go and you ask to every piece of that, is it true? How might it not be true? And what you'll find is that maybe one or two of these le- leaps are true, but the vast majority are not. And you find flaws at every single level in the implicit argument that you're building against yourself. And it's a cognitive behavioral therapy technique. It, it helps to sort of take the sting out of some of these negative experiences. And yeah. I, would, I would recommend that. Yeah. And one other thing I'd say, I think, you know, theme of the podcast a little bit is this idea that when you codify things or snap yourself out of emotional states, you realize that reality isn't quite what your emotional Mm -hmm. uh, beliefs are. Mm -hmm. So if if you're struggling because this particular person is making you feel a certain way, I think that exercise is awesome. If in general you're just feeling badly because you're like, oh, I'm uncharismatic, I'm a loser, no one likes me, I would say you can codify every interaction you had that day because you might be thinking about this one person who doesn't like you and going, oh, Sorry, Angel. Um, <laughs> and and what you might do is like, okay, I woke up and I talked to a barista and she was neutral to positive. And yeah. then I talked to my friend Charlie and we had a great interaction. He seems to really like me. And then I talk, and you know, and for me at least, when I was in a fraternity, there were twenty six guys in my pledge class, and two of them and I didn't have a great relationship. And that is where my headspace could go. It's like, oh, these guys don't like me. It's so stressful. But I just thought about. It, I was like, I got twenty six people in this pledge class. I interacted with ten of them today, and eight of them went great. Mm-hmm. That helps me to realize this isn't the end of the world that this one person doesn't like you. And what and what you'll realize, and you can also expand sort of your imagination is, you know, this person looked at me funny. That means you can you can take these questions apart. Yeah. Wait a second. Does that mean that he doesn't like me? Or does that mean that he had an itch? Or does no. that mean that Well, he- I'll tell you, spoiler <laughs> for this one person, he's incredibly insecure and unhappy. Yeah. And it, he didn't like me because he was angry all the time and needed an outlet for it. And me and him are fine now, you know, however many years later, because Mm -hmm. he's matured and gone past his insecurity and his inner rage. But at the time, he just would lash out at whoever's nearby. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh man, it's so weird. Should I blame myself? Why is this? Because he did have friends that he didn't do it to. On the whole, the world is just a lashing for this guy because he grew up in a way that made him miserable. Mm -hmm. And now that he's not like that, what do you know? Me and him can be in a room hanging out, have a good conversation. Yeah. um, yeah, I think this idea of, of not necessarily ascribing, even if someone is a dick to you, it's not necessarily because of because anything of you. you did. The the leap that's being made in what this exercise, and there's many others that you can do, is that there was a particular behavior, which I assume meant a particular thing, which then means a particular outcome for me. Mm-hmm. And at every stage in that, there are, you're assuming the worst case scenario, which is rarely the case. Yeah. Like the look they gave you might not have been ascribed to the emotion. The emotion that they had might not have been because of you. It yeah. might be because you remind them of someone in their past. Them disliking you, genuinely disliking you, might not be because you are whatever you're beating yourself up about. It might be because they are jealous of you yeah. or because they, I don't know, 
had someone in their life that tough beat day. them. And like, yeah, well, no, yeah. I'm saying, let's say they hate, <laughs> say they hate Charlie Hooper, yeah. right? That's true. Oh, they looked at me funny because they don't like me. Okay, I'm gonna assume that's true. They don't like me because I, Charlie Hooper, have flaws. Mm-hmm. Maybe, and we can dive into that. You can use it as an, an opportunity for growth, but it could be because you look like their uncle who used to beat them. Mm-hmm. So even if they do dislike you, you don't, it's, it's not immediately the case that it's because you're evil or bad or wrong or a yeah. loser. You know, it could be because of any number of things that have nothing to do with you as you actually yeah. are. It's just you as the outlet they perceive you to be. This is why, this is the reason that, that I used to believe that relationships are everything because my previous approach would have been to mend the relationship or get other relationships. And my new approach is only if you include the relationship with yourself mm-hmm. because ultimately your willingness to buy into whatever the belief that they are pushing on you about the way that you are is the best place to address this problem. Why am I so prone to buy into a belief, and by the way, not just to you, this is humanity, sure. that I am wrong, bad, you know, like what, what is it inside of me that feels uh, ultimately unworthy? And how come that is so easily triggered? That's where I think tons and tons of life-changing growth can occur. But of course, charisma is important too. This is just the piece that I'm most fascinated with today. Mm-hmm. Hope that you guys enjoyed that clip. If you want to see more like this and have us do more podcasts, we are 100% funded by our generous patrons. And if you'd like to contribute, there's a link in the description. We'll have one pop up on the screen right here so that we can do more podcasts where we have fun conversations and hopefully some deep ones like this. Either way, hope that you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.